Hello, it's the last time I explained you how to control the GPIO ports over yeah, in Cephia. First we did it um, over the NIF library, the old one, and not with the Cephia function. Then we uh, tried it with the register directly and then we using the device tree. And just for the reminder, um, we placed also our own LED. I mean, we have here four built-in LEDs. We connect connected one LED to port 027 yeah, and here we have a 680 ohm resistor and here just to ground and uh, we let out how we can bring in our own LED here in the device tree. We had predefined LEDs which we used uh, last time so for LED we can just uh, get it from the device tree all the information store it in a structure and then control it via the function for the device tree structure. And when we're looking at the device tree file, we're seeing here our LEDs which are defined. And now the question is, how can we add our LED4 here? Yeah? And this is also not so difficult. We just go on config file, create our own overlay file. and there we have to define it. Yeah, um, we just, uh, I mean we're having here the root, yeah, it's the same like in the device tree when you're looking, we're having here the root and then the LEDs, the LED nodes here and there. I just copy one here, I'm taking the LED1 for example and there I define my own one, yeah, but I call it this time LED4. And this is on GPIO 0, port uh, pin 27, and we have it here different. We have it, it's active and it's high. Yeah, and it's a red LED. So, and this is actually all what we have to do. Yeah, we have an overlay file. But when we compile it, um, we have to make a pristine build since we changed something in the uh, device tree. And also here, of course, I have to exchange it with another label, with the LED4 label. And then I make a pristine build. And uh, then, yeah, let's look here. Is our device, I flash it on the board. And you're seeing then that our red LED is lightning. When we're taking a look at the graphical interface here, yeah, we're going on actions, device tree, and we're seeing here the graphical interface. Yeah. Then, no, this is too big. We're having here the LED 1, LED 2, LED 3. The LED 0 is here. It's red because it has two functions. And also when you're seeing here our port um, uh, 0 027, yeah, pin 27, we have here also two multiple pin users are assigned. So um, we have here the I square C and the LED4. Uh, doesn't matter here, but um, sometimes it's also not good. And the question is how to deactivate the I square C, and it's also quite easy. So we're having just the I square C making the status to disabled. Yeah. When I make then a pristine build again and taking then a look at the device tree at the graphical interface, you will directly see that now we have only LED4 here selected. So I square C is now disabled and we cannot use it anymore. Yeah, so you see you can easily activate, deactivate something and also configure something. After we took a look in the device tree and understand also how we can control a GPIO part and LEDs over the device tree, we want to control also a button over the device tree. And for this we are copying our 
project from before I had, I just make a copy from my second link um, since I don't want always to make the overlay file new yeah, because I still want to use my uh, LED overlay. So I could just call it third and this time button. And you're seeing here, first we're having our overlay file here inside, uh, which we can adapt or delete if we don't need it anymore. We have also the build here, but this is done with the old path and this is not working. We can either delete it directly here or when we open an existing application to import this to our Visual Studio, we just can delete it also from here. Are you seeing here my third button and when I go here to this I'm seeing the build and I just remove it then remove build configuration. Then I have to create a new one and I don't build it directly I just generate the configuration file so it's going a little bit faster. So let's see now how to program the button, but before I want to clean up here a little bit since the LED number uh, is not right uh, here. So we are, I just remove everywhere LED 1. And here uh, I don't want to toggle the LED anymore. I want that it's toggled with the button when I press the button. And when we're taking a look in the device tree, you're seeing here we're having our device tree, the root, and we had here our LEDs, and we have there something similar with the buttons. Yeah, so we are using button zero, and then using the GPIO is also defined, GPIO zero with pin eleven, and also the flags are written here, and we're using it similar. First, we have to define button here, button node. getting the node label and uh, the node label is uh, similar to the LED just it's called buttons and button zero yes this is how it's in uh, what is standing in the macro it's just for your information and the structure for the LED we define this time global because we uh, need it then also in the callback function. And just to remind us, this uh, structure here just stores all the information from the device tree, like the GPIO port and the pin number and the flag. And we're needing the same for the um, button. So and instead the LED node, we're taking the button node, so we're getting uh, the similar information here. And also we have to define the GPIO pin this time as output. Yeah. So here's this uh, as input. So LED is the output and the button is an input. Yeah. Okay. And we need another structure where we call, where we store the callback function uh, for uh, yeah when we are pressing the button, what's happened there? Yeah? And this structure is just called GPIO callback and uh, has just this information: the so callback function and uh, the, the pin number uh, when the callback function should be called. Yeah, it's a bit mask. Um, you can there register multiple pins, but we will register there only one pin. And how to, f uh, yeah, first we uh, um, define of course our callback functions then. Um, button press callback, um, this is a header for it, but we don't need the parameter here. And we just toggle the LED this time. Yeah? And now we have to place this callback function into the uh, this structure here and this is done with the function GPI init callback. Yeah, this uh, you're seeing here is a pointer on the structure and the callback function here and the bit mask 
force a pin yeah this is just shifting the pin for the pin, no pin number here to the left and uh, it's a bit mask yeah? we're needing only one pin when you're writing here zero so callback function will never be called in the next step we have to register this callback function this structure which we just initialize yeah, um, with the GPIO port here and uh, the structure. You can add here multiple callback function. We have here only one. Yeah. And in the last step, we have to activate the interrupt. You can do this, do this before or afterwards. Um, we are just using the structure from the button. Yeah, there's also a function without the DT, but this is of course easier and saying when the interrupt should be called and this is when the edge is going to active this means the rising edge uh, when the button is pressed then the callback should be called yeah and this is all we uh, build it and flash it to our device And you're seeing here our board, yeah, when I'm pressing the button, you see the LED is going on and off. You see it's quite comfortable uh, with the device tree. Yeah. You can easily add the button, you can, when the hardware is defined, the resources and so on. Uh, you just have to get used to it. Uh, to add another button on the same way, it's also not so difficult. I hope you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video.